So in the light of all of this, the question is for me, and I think for many of you, what is a company to do? What's a corporation to do? Maybe you're not in the energy business. What can we do as a company to, to take action within this context and make a change? I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that BT has done, some of the things we have done as a company. But we're a big company, and big companies can have lots of long lists of things that they've done. And the bigger you are, the longer your list can be. So I'm also going to spend a little bit of time talking to you about what can we do going forward to ensure we're not just presenting long lists of things, but that we are actually contributing towards solving the problem. Um, I work for BT. I'm just waiting for a slide to come up. They're up. Oh, they're up there. Great, thanks. Um, we are a telco. We, are, we sell IT and communications integration services to global multinational companies globally, and we are the incumbent provider in the UK. Um, and as John said, I look after social responsibility for BT in North America. Um, this is just a quick, quick, quick look at some of, our, of some of our awards. I'm not going to go through them all. The only one I want to mention is the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. We are the sector super leader in the telecom sector um, and have been for the last eight years. We're very proud of that. We're also very pleased that many of the other companies in that sector are hot on our heels and are closing the gap. Um, and that's, a, I think, a very good sign for the industry as a whole. This, um, slide shows you. I'm, I'm going to focus mostly on our direct carbon footprint. But before I do that, I just want to give you a feel for the scope of activities that I think a corporation should be thinking about when they're taking action in the climate change space. And in fact, I think this same framework can apply in most, if not all, areas of sustainability. That ring in the middle that you see is direct footprint. So in terms of carbon, that would be the direct carbon emissions of our activities due to our energy consumption as a company, that is energy we pay to use and the carbon emissions that are due to that. The ring surrounding that, the indirect emissions, that reflects the products and services we sell to our customers that are now in the hands of our customer. So that, in our case, might be a telephone, it might be a router, it might be a modem. The customer's got it on their premise, the customer's paying for the energy usage, so it's not our direct footprint, but we are very much complicit in that footprint because we designed that product and we set it up to be used the way it's used. The customer impacts it as well. If you're selling the customer a car, the footprint is partly about how they put their foot on the accelerator, but it's also about how you design the car. So those are the, those are the first two. In the case of tel telecoms companies, I would say our indirect footprint is probably a similar order of magnitude, maybe a little more than our direct footprint. In the case of a car company, Ford, I know, happen to know because it's in their CSR report, their direct footprint is 8 million tons. Their indirect footprint is about 400 million tons of emissions. So as a company, you need to look at what is material to your operation, which of these areas. The third ring in here, the enabled impact. So for us, a motherhood and apple pie example of enabled impact is using conferencing, using teleconferencing, instead of traveling to a meeting. Okay, And so that's not the, the emission of our product, but our product goes out there into the marketplace and has the opportunity to reduce, or in some cases, increase the emissions of our customers in a, in a different area of their business. For that, for us, in the ICT, the information communications technology world, that is a very material area. Estimates are that our enabled impact to reduce the emissions of the world around us are between five and 15 times as much as our direct footprint as an industry. So that is a very material area. And then the fourth ring in there, the opportunity to inform, to inform and influence the society around you. Clearly for a company with a significant brand name, that's a very important area. And for a media company, that's also a very important area. But although I've highlighted these other areas in which companies can have an impact, none of that do we believe relinquishes us of the responsibility to reduce our own direct carbon footprint, not least of all because that's what gives us the license to take action in those other areas, those concentric rings. So our direct footprint looks like this. We started measuring it in 1992. It took us about four years to really get our arms around it. So we baselined our footprint in 1996, at which time it was 1.6 million tons. Since then, we've reduced it by, six, by 58%, just short of 60%, to 0 0.6 million tons. That's our direct footprint. And we, this is without buying offsets. This is actual reduction of our direct carbon footprint. 
and we have an objective to reduce it by 80% on that 1996 baseline by 2016. A sort of a quick overview of how did we achieve that 60% reduction so far in three areas. First of all, in changing our business processes. So that, for example, would include substituting um, services instead of transport or re replacing a transport service. Our service engine is driving around with an online service to provide the same service. Reducing paper usage, changing paper billing to internet-based billing. Reducing our real estate by creating a much more agile workforce so people don't rely on having a space, an office, and a desk, but, but are, are able to work in a much more agile manner in a much more agile manner. Changing our business processes is the first way. Secondly is efficiency, predominantly efficiency of devices. Data centers are generally considered to be about 1.5% of global carbon emissions. Changing the way we run our data centers, changing the efficiency, raising the operating temperature of a data center. Initially sounds counterintuitive, but it allows you to air condition less putting in energy efficient electric, um, light bulbs, all of those things around the efficiency of the devices. And thirdly, renewable energy. We buy 0.7% of all the UK's electricity, but we buy 7% of all the UK's elect, um, renewable electricity. About five years ago, we signed a three-year renewable energy contract at, its, at the time the largest in the world, and two years ago, we re-signed that three-year deal. We're now about halfway through it. No longer the largest in the world, but still a very large renewable energy contract. Um, contract. But as you'll see from the title of this slide, this is BT's UK carbon footprint improvement. When we set this target in 96, of the, about the 160, 170,000 people in the company, only about 1,000 were outside of the UK. We now have about 105,000 people in the company, and about 20,000 of them are outside the UK. So taking action on just our UK carbon footprint is no longer sufficient. And one of the things we needed to do was change that carbon footprint measure to incorporate, and that objective for the future, to incorporate our global activities. The second thing we wanted to do was build that into our financial activities as a company so it was linked to our financial activities as a company. We also face the challenge that outside of the UK, we are a very dynamic organization. Two and a half, three years ago, we had 1,000 people in the US. We now have 4,000 people. So we needed to set up a carbon objective that allowed us to continue to grow as a business. That growth was predominantly acquisition. So we weren't creating new carbon footprint. We were taking over a data center from a customer as part of an outsourcing deal, or we were acquiring the data center of a company that we, 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 together with that acquisition. So we needed to be able to take that growth on. We also wanted to be able to move away from a set of arbitrary numbers and relate what we were doing to solving the problem of climate change. A very bold thing to try and do, but we wanted to find a way of relating our carbon emissions to solving the problem. 